A guy wakes up in a strange place, all confused. He doesn't know how he got there, where his phone is, or anything. When he tries to talk to someone, a voice behind a door tells him to stay quiet and chill. Then this invisible person tells him he's been drugged and will feel sick for a while, but now he's got work to do. They say goodbye and leave. The guy, named Joe, tries to figure out what's going on. Suddenly, food packets fall through a slot in the door. Joe tries to get help, saying he has a pregnant wife who needs him, but he gets yelled at and even hurt when he tries to reach for the food. He feels like he doesn't deserve this. Later, he uses his tie to soothe his hurt wrist and checks out the place. Just as he's about to eat, a loud alarm goes off, and an AI voice welcomes him to a training program. Joe's confused and asks questions, but his neighbor warns him to stay quiet since answers won't come. Then there's a countdown, and Joe's told to rest up. He doesn't get what's happening, but tries to ask for the interlocutor's name only to be told they might not even have names there. Soon, there are screams from nearby, and Joe's told to hush so others can rest. He's told to accept this place as moored and to get some sleep. As Joe sits against the wall, he hears someone begging not to do something, promising to follow the plan the next day, but then they're dragged away. Joe tries to block out the sounds and listens to the AI saying it's all for his peace of mind. As the sun rises, a whistle blows, and a man's voice cheers Joe for the new day. He's reminded to keep the cameras clean or face punishment. Joe's neighbor advises him to follow orders, saying the scary incident from last night was just motivation he'll get used to. Joe throws some trash into a hole in the floor and finds something eerie underneath, a human skull. He screams, but his neighbor tells him to get used to it since many have died there. Then they talk about a contract Joe signed with the company Mard, warning him about the consequences of not reading the fine print. When Joe protests, saying he worked for Mard for 10 years and demands to leave, Mard announces a seminar to improve his productivity. Joe's new job requires him to work from six in the morning till 10 at night, turning a mill. If he doesn't meet his quota, he'll be punished. Joe tries to argue, but is told to focus on surviving and working. He struggles at first, but eventually succeeds, even exceeding his quota. Mard congratulates him, and Joe listens to more of the corporation's ads while he works. When the work signal sounds, Mard praises Joe for completing his first day of self-improvement. He's done well by surpassing his quota. At night, Joe hears women screaming while Mord announces another dismissal. Later, his neighbor learns that Joe doubled his work quota and advises him against keeping such a fast pace. Joe is confused. If he doesn't meet the quota, he's punished. But if he exceeds it and comes last, it means death. The neighbor warns Joe not to share his quota with others, as they're not friends and will always try to outdo him. They've all climbed the corporate ladder, receiving bonuses, but ended up stuck here. Joe starts talking about his wife and their awaited son, but the neighbor advises him to focus on working hard to survive without overdoing it. The next day, Joe recalls his promises to his wife as he works. The workday ends with an order for Joe to strip naked, wash, and return to his chamber. The following day is hotter, making Joe tired quickly. He asks his neighbor about the mill and why they're all there. The neighbor says they produce nothing, making the place devoid of purpose. Joe runs out of water and calls out to the guard, who tells him to filter his urine through his sneakers to drink. Joe is disgusted, but is told it's what Mord wants to push him to his limits. Joe continues to work, remembering his promises to his wife. Mord notices his growing self-awareness. Joe finds the name Alex carved out and asks about it, learning that Alex is a legend who escaped from there. The next morning, Mard praises Joe for his hard work and gives him a special pen. Then she announces a new daily goal, 370 laps on the mill. Joe is shocked and angrily expresses his frustration. The AI explains that people often don't realize their strengths and that it's tough but necessary for change. As Joe starts pushing the mill, he notices that instead of counting laps, a cross appears for each punishment, doubling each time. Despite this, he keeps pushing with all his strength. When his neighbor learns about Joe's impossible task, he gets angry. Joe surpasses the laps, argues with Mard, and now they'll all suffer. Mard announces Joe's failure to meet the quota and introduces a new colleague, Kate Stevens. Joe is horrified to see his wife's face on the screen and promises to do anything to keep her from being there. He's given one day to prove himself and is pressured with a glowing screen above his compartment. The new workday starts and Joe pushes the mill, facing a mocking image of himself. Despite feeling like a failure, he persists and completes the 370 laps exactly at the end of the day. Mard congratulates him, cancels the penalties, and shows him images of his wife with their baby. 
Joe cries tears of joy, but then sorrow realizing he missed his son's birth. In the morning, Joe asks his neighbor about the place. The neighbor shares his story about missing his son due to work and suggests Joe investigate a blind spot. Joe finds an empty spot on the wall and using the gifted pen, starts making a hole overnight. This routine continues for days until he manages to create a hole big enough to crawl through. But as he does, someone hits him and he blacks out. When he wakes up, the hole is sealed and Mard expresses disappointment but gives him another chance. Joe learns his neighbor got punished with an increased quota of 1,000 laps due to Joe's actions. His neighbor's leg is broken and he confesses they're controlled by a computer he created. Joe realizes that if they stop working, everyone's score will drop, disrupting the algorithm. He tries to convince others to stop working, but fear makes them continue. Seeing no other choice, Joe picks up the pen, feeling hopeless. In the evening, Joe chats with his neighbor, who reveals his name is Alex. Alex tells Joe he also tried to escape, but was caught like him. Joe hears that Mard took Alex away during the night. In the morning, the AI wakes Joe up and shows him pictures of his wife and their baby to cheer him up. But Joe feels horrified and shouts insults at Mard, getting fired immediately. The doors open and clerks enter, watching silently as Joe thrashes around, demanding answers. Then, a man in uniform enters, admitting he enjoys firing people. He prepares a syringe, expressing disappointment in Joe's ingratitude. But when he mentions having a house for a single mother and her son, Joe snaps and starts beating him. Mard announces the guard's failure and impending firing, while Joe gets promoted. Covered in blood, Joe realizes he's gone too far. The guard asks him to continue, but Joe stands up, declaring he's not a monster, and leaves. Immediately, Joe finds himself in an office with other employees. His interlocutor congratulates him for passing the career advancement simulator in just an hour, even though his son hasn't been born yet. Joe struggled with middle-level managers, but got stuck on the eighth level. Mard realized he was too good. His productivity and personal qualities improved and his coup exceeded expectations. Joe is considered a non-conventional thinking leader. He removes the suction cups, but his interlocutor ignores it and shows him his new office in Mard, where he can climb positions for years. They reach the desired floor, but Joe can't shake off thoughts about the simulation. The office is equipped with new gadgets and Joe expects a salary increase and perks. He signs a contract not to disclose the simulation's details, receiving assurances of loyalty from Mard. Sitting at the table, Joe looks at a photo of his wife and calls Kate. She's surprised, and Joe struggles to hold back tears, reflecting on his eventful day. After calming down, he promises to dismantle the place. The movie is presented as sci-fi, but it unveils the reality of modern corporate exploitation, where people start living to work rather than working to live. Here you will get mind-blowing movie recaps every time.